Hello and uh, welcome back. This is the third analysis video of practice game number nine. That turned out to be such an exciting game. In fact, the most exciting game on this channel. As exciting as a backgammon game will ever get. And um, because of that, I'm going to be making several... Um, uh, analysis videos. There will definitely be another analysis video after this one. I must explain something here. I, When I play backgammon, I play both sides. Like when I do a roll for white and when I do a roll for black, I always play each turn very conservatively and cautiously, which is the way I recommend people play. I don't, for example, play cautiously for one side and then play in a risky or blitz manner for the other side. Um, some people might do that in order to create an exciting game, but when you, when you um, play cautiously and sensibly for both sides, then when an exciting game like this happens, it is truly exciting. And um, as I've said before, if you play cautiously and sensibly, um, i found on most occasions um, you will uh, uh, have um, the upper hand in most games if your opponent does not play in the same cautious and sensible way as you do. However, as I said, this was a game where, as with all games, I played both sides cautiously and sens sensibly and it still turned out so exciting, which will happen occasionally. But anyway, um, I'm going to overlap a little bit into the last analysis video. In other words, I'm not going to start off where the last analysis video finished off. I'm going to slightly overlap just to refresh your memories. And uh, as usual, I've got all the rolls of the dice written on my uh, notepad to my left here, which you can't see because it's out of camera shot. Anyhow, at this stage, um, what rolled a double three which was well just perfect because he went one two three did a hit there and then played one two three and one two three putting him in a very commanding position over black because now everything sealed off here black cannot get him so white has to keep rolling with the next roll White rolled the five and a two where he went one and two and then took the five off. Um, with the next roll, White rolled a six and a two where he took the six off here and played the two there. And then White rolled the double one. Now, with the double one, if he'd taken these three checkers off here, well, that would not have been sensible because then he would have played, had to play this checker onto here, leaving two checkers on their own. So the best, most sensible move would have been to play two uh, checkers here and then take two off there. So that leaves one spare space for black to try and get back in. The black rolled, black then rolled a six and a five and uh, could not get back in. So, um, at that point, uh, white rolled a three and a two. And um, the only sensible way to play a three and a two in order not to check a le leave a checker on its own would have been to take the three off there and play the two there. Now, um, Black rolled again and rolled a six and a four, where again he could not get back in. With the next roll, white rolled a three and a one. Now, I have to explain something important here. As you just saw, white played very sensibly in order to find himself in this kind of position here. With the previous rolls, White really could not have played any differently 
to what he what, what he did. So the way I played was pretty much I made the best moves possible with the roles that were given and found white in this position. Now at this stage white rolls a three and a one which is an excellent role particularly at the beginning of the game but here it turned out to be a disaster for white because a three and a one meant leaving a checker on its own. I actually um, tried different combinations for this situation and other roles where uh, White would have had to uh, leave checkers on their own would have been uh, other combinations of the dice would have been a 3 and a 2, a 6 and a 3, a 6 and a 4, a 5 and a 3 and a 4 and a 2. With the rolls I've just mentioned, if any of those rolls had happened, again, White would have had to leave a checker on its own. As it happened, roll the 3 and a 1, as I said, excellent at the beginning of the game, disaster here. And the only way white could play in order not to leave two checkers on their own and only leave one checker on its own. In fact, when I was playing practice game number nine, when this happened, I spent about six or seven minutes thinking about the move, which I edited out of that particular video because people don't want to watch a video in total silence while I think for six or seven minutes. But I thought so hard and I just realized there was no way out. So, um, I basically went one, two, three, and one. That's all you could do. And then, lo and behold, black rolls a six and a four. So, hits with the four, and then plays on one, two, three, four, five, six. Then, white, well, if white had rolled a number of combinations in order not to be able to get back in, that would have given black ample time to move this checker back to his own quarter and start taking checkers off the board. But as it happened, white rolled the four and a two where he went two there. And because there are spare checkers here where um, black can potentially do a hit and a prime, the sensible move for white would have been to rescue that checker and go one, two, three, four, there. Now, I will leave this analysis video where we are now. And in the next analysis video, I will show you what happened from here right to the end of the game. Here, you would think white is in a winning position and you'd be right. White is definitely in a winning position because he's taken more checkers off the board and, well, Black's not too far away from his own home quarter, but from his own quarter, I should say, but White can also easily get to his own quarter. So, you know, would Black do another hit when White tries to escape or would White do another hit on Black? Anything's possible at this stage, but it definitely looks in favor for white to win. And I'm not going to spoil it for you by telling you who won. If you want to know, you can go back to and watch the uh, uh, practice game number nine in its entirety. But in the next video, I will show you exactly what happened from this point all the way to the end of the game. Um... As I said, if you watch practice game nine on its own, you will see how fortunes just kept changing, which is just what made this game so exciting. At one stage before all of this happened, and this is what I explained in another analysis video, uh, long before this situation, if Black had offered a offered White to resign without a gambling, just a simple re resignation of the loss of one game. In many situations, the person playing white would have accepted that because white looked in serious danger of actually getting gammon. But on this channel, we don't do that. We play games right through just to see what happens in case there's an exciting development like it happened in this game. So as I said, at this stage, it looks like a victory for white. 
I'm not going to spoil it for you by telling who won, as I said, but um, you will see in the next, if you watch the, well, if you watch the practice game number nine game, if you watch practice game number nine, I should say, you uh, you will see who won, but uh, in the next video, in the next analysis video, you will also definitely see who won. So once again, wow, what a development, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.